Goku is supposed to be this robust representation of strength and adaptability. He's supposed to be a character that goes forwards, not backwards. Why should he go backwards in muscle mass? We see him in the Piccolo Jr. Demon Saga, towards the end of Dragon Ball with the start of a Greek god body. Little seeds were planted for how this 18 year old will look in a couple of years. He looks jacked. He has a physique a lot of us would be happy with. Then you compare it to his scrawny ketchup colored counterpart with the most underwhelming transformation in Dragon Ball history. You're perplexed and disappointed at this scrawny ripoff Kaioken reject vegan and to add insult to injury, they had the audacity to make this nigga lathered up in buttery oil to make his skin look brighter than a dark skinned dude's eyes and teeth when the lights go out. This is a bodybuilding channel, so let me critique this physique and convey why I detest it. Not only because of its lack of muscularity, but due to its sheer uncreative nature and antithetical acquisition that spits in the face of Goku's character. Look at his scrawny arms. Come on man, seriously? Seriously? This is a man who can punch holes in King Kai's planet and made the Spring Kai step the fuck down when he run into run the failed Mach of Vegeta. Why should a man with such credentials, let alone a god, have such a scrawny build? Now, I already know what a lot of you are going to say, Lord Beerus is a god and he's skinny. Yes, this is true, but Lord Beerus was never portrayed or established as this super muscular god of destruction. He's this different beast who Goku and the fighters were up against. And while I do wish he was a bit more muscular, or at the very least had a transformation presenting a more muscular build, his character design is a bit more forgiving. Now back to this fake ass Kaioken impersonator. They deadass had Goku attain this transformation not from training but from holding hands with five saves of righteous hearts. Seriously? It's not fucking Captain Planet where you combine five robust powers to create the ultimate being of earth, fire, wind, water, and heart. This is a show predicated on the protagonist as established martial artist who yearns to surpass his current strength by his own merits and diligent training. When Goku stated, I spent my life pushing myself to be the strongest and now I've learned this, this power level. I'll never reach on my own, it's almost like Goku pretty much breaks the fourth wall with the realization of the writers screwing him over with this hand me down ass transformation. Now back to the ticket of his lackluster ass build. Just look at this man's chest. It's like this weird ass collarbone that wants to be an upper chest but stuck in purgatory. Because the character designer was having an identity crisis, and by the way. Yes I know Akira Toyama still designs his characters but this man should not have cooked that day, who let this man cook? He should have reevaluated the recipe and started over, but I digress. Seriously, Goku used to have one of the best chests in anime. And now to regress to bird mode purgatory. And next to his chest, his interior delts. His shoulders no longer have that incredible bodybuilding indentation they once had when Goku wore his orange gi. Seriously, I miss when Kuritsuyama drew Goku and his E-Fighters with this small detail, reinforcing Goku as this jacked and stacked martial artist who you wouldn't want to mess with. Remember when Goku and Kaioken Ken time sin against Vegeta in the first battle? His shoulders looked massive. It could be compared to a pump you get in the gym after doing multiple shoulder presses and side raises. This is the beauty of the additional muscle mass that followed these transformations. There was a subtle logic to them. This indicates increased blood flow to emit more powerful bursts of energy and strength. Indicator in bodybuilding, the pump can be an indicator of the body's will to keep pushing forward. Likewise, in Dragon Ball Z, Goku's increased muscle mass throughout multiple sagas were an indicator of his body releasing what it had left in order to get the job done against his opponents. I know it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to give this transformation some milk and beef it up. Speaking of arms and legs, look at this dude's arms. Look at how they masquerade, my boy. My cousin and I used to critique Dragon Ball's atrophied style with the phrase, these motherfuckers became light-skinned vegans. Where the fuck are the gains? Super Saiyan God's arms are possibly the most disgraceful attribute of the transformation despite being a bootlegged Daisoda Kaioken ripoff. And this is supposed to be the form of the gods. Yeah, it appears weaker than any other form from an aesthetic standpoint. This is a direct contradiction with Dragon Ball's original aesthetic. Imagine how basically intimidating Super Saiyan God form would look with added muscle mass. If only we had an example. Oh shit, you heard that? It's Yu Yu Takahashi to save the day. Yep, that's right. We have a perfect example of how menacing Super Saiyan God would look, courtesy of the incredible freelance animator by the name of Yu Takahashi. Now now, with the help of YouTuber by the name of Anime AJ, I am able to recall the magnificent episode of 114 where Goku transforms into Super Saiyan God's throw hands with Kale and Khalifa, sporting a much more defined physique that was a return to form. Those defined pecs, anterior deltoid muscles, and massive arms made a glorious return. 
Granted, the muscle mass alone isn't what solidified the rugged appearance of the transformation during the episode. Takahashi's use of contour shading and jagged angles finally made Super Saiyan God look intimidating. The form looked truly jacked for the first time ever. I was blown away by this choice of return to form. As a side note, remember when Goku fired that key gun? It was baller as hell, and what contributed to the boss like moment was his overall stature and bodily composition. His chest is brilliantly defined with curved shading, as opposed to that, as opposed to the clavicle purgatory we experienced in the first iteration of the transformation of the show. His biceps, while they do appear slick in some instances, exhibit exuberant and massive definition regardless of camera angles. Look at how menacing Goku looks over here as he stands there with the show me what you got smirk while taking a fighting stance with superiority and might. This is how the transformation should have ultimately looked. I can already hear the counter arguments to this video. The biggest one being, having large muscles doesn't mean you can fight. Jesus Christ, I made an entire video about DYL mixed martial arts fanboys and their obsession with trying to invalidate the art of muscle building, bodybuilding, and even powerlifting on the basis of functionality. In actuality, they take issue with bodybuilding because they cannot visually impose themselves upon other people as a spectacle. In fact, it's all an elaborate inferiority complex in their, on their end. The average person isn't impressed with a 135 pound black belt walking the streets of Manhattan. However, a gym bro who trained religiously for 7 years with will frequently get asked what sport they play. This reality infuriates functional training gym bros and DYAL UFC outcasts because they want the attention, they want the clout, but they don't have the boss to admit it. They aren't even genuine martial artists, they're just skinny Maguires who took one Jiu Jitsu class and they think they can take on Yijiro Hanma. Now, if they are willing to throw their practicality argument around for the sake of this video, I will humor them. Goku once stated how the large bulky muscles of Super Vegeta and Super Trunks transformations were impractical because of their large bulbous size, making combat movements extremely difficult. Fair point, but the hilarity behind this realization is there is obviously an, an in-between, in a middle ground. This middle ground was Super Saiyan 2. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan was jacked as fuck and his muscles even expanded indicating to the viewer that shit was about to go down. This was a visual indication of a level that would eventually make Cell shit his pants. Super Saiyan God's form didn't even come close to this in its first iteration. Beerus didn't look like he was on the verge of losing at all. Beerus was not shook. This whole large muscles doesn't mean you can fight, large muscles slow you down only moderately adds up in the Lord Dragon Ball considering that Super Saiyan God was just barely hanging on with Beerus. Granted, he held his own, but it wasn't a visually impressive display of strength that we haven't already seen before. And if I can draw an example from real life, why is it that we always ignore the fact that boxing, kickboxing, UFC have weight classes? Why is it that if USADA, the Drug Testing Association, if they magically vanished, John Bones Jones would suspiciously gain 30 pounds of muscle overnight? Why is it that in this in a hypothetical battle like Mike Tyson versus Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, a 5'10", 220-pound fighter, going up against Floyd Mayweather, a 5'8", 148-pound boxer. Why is it that people would argue it doesn't appear to be a fair fight and would require Tyson to drop weight in order for Mayweather to accept the conditions? Why is it that these conditions are completely disregarded in this discussion? It's because muscle mass does matter. It's a plate of armor and a weapon of mass destruction to whoever fighter masters its use. It does have vital components, but these DYEL fanboys you just refuse to acknowledge it for the reason I stated earlier. Dragon Ball's aesthetic never evolved around the cliche looks and be deceiving trope. And never gave a fuck about that and had warriors throwing hands combined with giant fucking beasts of energy at anyone who wanted smoke. Therefore, this argument to uphold a strong aesthetic in Dragon Ball on the basis of large muscles are impractical is ridiculous. All in all, Super Saiyan God transformation's lack of muscularity contributed greatly to its subpar appearance. Mark in my book is Goku's worst physique ever.